This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. This is bonus episode 437. I'm your host Duncan McLeish. Welcome to the show. Up on this episode we are reviewing a screener that has been submitted in. This is Kids vs Aliens which will be available for you tomorrow in selected theatres in the States and on demand services as well. It will get a future release date making its way to the horror subscription platform Shudder, that date still to be announced. We will be reviewing that movie non-spoiler because it's not out and I don't want to spoil it for you after you've watched the trailer and it's coming right up right now. It's going to be a long one tonight boys. should have a party. Keep it small and your parents won't find out, I promise. Just one of those stupid pranks. The reason to break up the party is... Oh! The aliens were using human skin to fuel their spaceship. I don't want my body to be alien fuel. This means war. Space. RLGE Films and Shudder will release the horror sci-fi film Kids vs. Aliens in theatres on demand and digital on January 20th, 2023. The Shudder streaming date will be announced later. Kids vs. Aliens is directed by Jason Eisner of VHS2, the ABCs of Death, Hobo with a Shotgun and co-written by John Davies and Eisner. The film stars Dominic Marici of Are You Afraid of the Dark, Phoebe Rex of The Last Divide, Cal McDonald of The Umbrella Academy in Moonshine and Asher Grayson Percival of Scaredy Cats and of course Ben Trechter. The synopsis is all that Gary wants is to make awesome home movies with his best buds. All his older sister Samantha wants to do is hang out with the cool kids. When their parents head out of town one Halloween weekend, an all-time rager of a teen house party turns to terror when aliens attack, forcing the siblings to band together and survive the night. And welcome back. So, Kids vs. Aliens, I mean, Eisner's been at this a while, so he has a very distinct visual style. It's kind of that lo-fi 80s, almost VHS 
sort of feel that he brings to pretty much every project he does. It's kind of like if your phone took a video and you had an Instagram filter that said retro and it pasted that over it. That's kind of what you get with an Eisner movie. And there's no exceptions here. Although I will say this about Kids and Aliens. I think this is his best made movie. Like certainly it looks like the technology is now much more refined digitally speaking or he's had a bit more money to play with specifically in the effects department both digital and practical. Kids vs Aliens is a movie that maybe wouldn't be getting as much traction had Psycho Gorman not really penetrated, and that's a good word to use here, penetrated the kind of popular culture. Uh, Psycho Gorman is a hugely important movie because it reminds you that movies can have a ton of heart, be really pulpy, can lean towards those of a certain age that grew up watching things like Power Rangers and like that kind of over the top splatter effect gore with a healthy dose of humour and um, you know a bit of nonsense and Kids vs Aliens falls into that camp as well scenes are almost exclusively drenched with kind of sunburst in the corner of the, the frame um, over the top lighting very similar to what you're seeing here it's the same hues in fact the colours that are lighting up my uh, DVD case right there are taken directly from the poster I've got an app that allows me to plug in the poster and the lights will recreate it it's one of those geeky things you do when you're watching a movie and you have the light, the light scheme doing the same as the poster that's the, the colour scheme it's you know it's magentas it's kind of sunburst orange it's blues it's pinks it's purples it's, it's like a whole range of what we now deem to be 80s aesthetic colours and it's a wash all over the movie and I don't use that in a, a term of well he's just playing it at tropes it works with this format it works with the subject matter at its core what you have is a, a group of kids left to their own device because the parents don't care and are out of town on work um, you've got the stereotypical um, kind of older sister who you know is attractive in her own right but wants to be seen by people her own age as being attractive and not for the quirky goofy things she's into that allows her to hang around with her much younger brother and her uh, and his friends on top of that you have the the kind of love interest who from the moment walks on the screen you know is a complete dickhead and continues to live up to that douchebag dickhead mentality throughout the entire movie Enter to the free um, aliens in the background. Now, I say in the background, and I genuinely mean that without giving away spoiler details. The alien element of this doesn't really come in until the midway mark. It's kind of almost like a we're going to get through all the setup. We're going to introduce you to all the characters. We're going to show you the ones you like. We're going to show you the ones you dislike, and then oh by the way, aliens. Um, another thing to mention about Kids vs. Aliens is it's an hour and 15 minutes long. That is a short movie for today's viewers, but actually, if anything, aids this movie immeasurably. The, the kind of focus of making the movie shorter actually is the best practice. I think a lot of filmmakers these days f feel the need to fling in the extra 15, 20 40 minutes into the runtime because they want to expand on ideas that don't need any sort of expansion at all. Actually are very well capsulized in kind of small bullet points, which this movie really does well. It hits you with all the cliche, all the all the tropes and these kind of bite-sized bullet point capsules that are easy to consume, that are not at any point head turning to the point where you're like, well that just doesn't feel right. They all hit the mark and then you get your alien stuff that comes in and when that kicks in, that Psycho Gorman-esque, it's a great comparison which is why I keep coming back to it, that Psycho Gorman-esque gore kicks in. And that's where Eisner really shines. This is a guy who, yeah, he uses a lot of digital effects but he will not, um, he will not cut out what he knows viewers of this cinema want which is gore and they are gooey and gnarly and slurpy and slimy and nasty and it's kind of fucking cool the creature design on the aliens is pretty basic but to be honest 
it's about as good as any other alien design. Um, there are plenty of nods to other movies. Once again, another Psycho Gorman S trope. There's plenty of nods to other movies you've seen before, specifically ones with aliens. One scene in particular, not giving away anything, but does nod maybe to a particular scene in a movie called Signs, and you know the scene that I'm talking about. The kid acting here is really good. I enjoy it. The they, they get to swear a little bit, which is always fun as an adult to watch these little kids say the word fuck. Um, so that's kind of cool to see that in there as well. The script isn't reinventing the wheel, nor does it need to. It kind of fits nicely in there for sure. And yeah, even, even the older actors in this one hold their own. This isn't Shakespeare. This isn't Broadway. This isn't, you know, like someone trying to... Like, no one's getting awards at the end of this, except maybe the people behind the special effects. But... It's got a charm about it and it's got a nifty tight little runtime that when this drops on Shudder it's almost guaranteed to become a hit because as people that consume media nowadays via subscription based platforms, runtimes in movies tend to go longer. There's almost like an, a, a, a kind of a, a required come to Jesus moment where we actually sit down with filmmakers and say, just because your movie can be two hours, doesn't need to be two hours. And Eisner hasn't fallen to that pit trap at all. He's given you a movie that delivers exactly what it needs to at the length it does as well. By the time you take credits off and after credit sequences from this movie, its runtime is closer to an hour and seven minutes, which is like a chef's kiss, mwah, perfect length for the, the subject matter and handles it well. My only gripe is in a world where in the last two years Psycho Gorman has been released, which really is the pinnacle of this, Kids vs. Aliens doesn't really do anything new, doesn't push any boundaries, and doesn't even necessarily go as far comedically, uh, gore-wise, or even action-wise as Psycho Gorman did. Now, granted, it's two different backgrounds here, um, Kostansky, who directed the the movie Psycho Gorman, comes from well, he works and uh, you know does all his stuff in his own practical effects studio, which gives you a little leg up when it comes to those things. But Eisner like has never leaned away from doing practical effects. He still adores them and puts them on the screen. It's just I think in terms of quality um, and originality, Psycho Gorman just beats it out. And as a result, I did feel like I was spending a huge portion of this thinking, oh, right, well, you know, Psycho Gorman did this better. On its own merits, and if you stumbled across this on Shudder or on demand, or you go and see it at the cinema this weekend when it comes out in the States, you're going to have a good time. The movie is geared that way. It's not going to overstay its welcome. It's going to deliver plenty of entertainment. You will laugh at sequences. You'll cringe at other sequences. It's going to deliver the goods for sure. But if you take a step back and look at the movies that it is referencing and the movies that it's also going against in terms of um, the genre specific climate it's in, it isn't as good as some of the other ones. And that's not to say that these movies, let's put it this way, I would happily watch Kids vs. Aliens before I watch Terrifier 2 again. Um, not because I think one movie is infinitely better than the other, it's just this movie knew exactly what length it needed to be where a movie like Terrifier 2 overstays its welcome um, by about 50 minutes. Uh, this movie knows exactly that it has enough subject matter, enough content to hold the, the viewer's attention for about an hour and delivers that hour and does it well. So in terms of grades for this one, I give it a three and a half out of five. It's thoroughly enjoyable. It doesn't reinvent the wheel in any way or revolutionise, but it's great to see Eisner back making movies. He's been off doing Dark Side of the Ring, which I love. I mean, as a, as a guy who grew up on like WWF wrestling, um, it's great hearing like some of the murkier stories of, of people that you saw on those shows. So I, I'm a big fan of Dark Side of the Ring. It's great to see him back doing horror because he's good at it. So yeah, 3.5 out of 5 for this movie. Let me give you the details of how you can check it out. So just a reminder, 
This movie will be released via RLGE Films and Shudder. It's going to be on demand and digital and in theatres from January the 20th, 2023. That's in the US. And it will be making its way to a Shudder streaming service near you with a date still to be announced. And thanks very much for joining me on this podcast under the stairs. A video podcast episode on the YouTubes and wherever you're consuming video content via any podcatcher out there. Most likely Spotify. If you're listening to the audio version, then if you want to see the video version, why not? You get to see my charming face. Then jump across to YouTube. The link is in the description wherever you're listening to us right now. Please subscribe to our feeds, subscribe to our YouTube page, and that way you never miss one of these reviews. So yeah, go and check out Kids vs. Aliens. It is a good time. And for all the rest of your podcast content, tputzcast.com is the place for you. Until the next time I speak to you, wherever you are, whatever the time zone is, and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. This is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs and I am signing off.